What's going on guys, Justin Fuller here and I am in front of a 2018 Ford F-150 and this is the STX package. I was lucky enough to get loaned this vehicle from Truck City Ford here in Buta, Texas. So I wanna thank Michael Foreman, one of my good friends from a previous life uh, for letting me borrow this car today. So let's talk about the F-150 and specifically the STX package. So I'm gonna start you at the back of the car. And the first thing I'll point out is that you'll notice that this has been badged, right? So you'll see the STX badge, and this is how you can quickly tell that it's, you know, the STX package. Now moving down to your wheel, you're gonna get a 20 inch wheel with this vehicle. So that's part of this package, something that you're adding on. Now, when you move into the interior of the car, I wanna point out a couple things here. The STX package, since we're looking at a base model, which is your XL, this is gonna add in the cloth interior, and it's also gonna add in the manual adjustment for um, your, your lower lumbar support, right? So just be aware of that when you're looking at this vehicle and considering it. You also have a touchscreen in this vehicle, so that's something to be aware of. And I'll go over Android Auto and how some of those features work when we hop inside the car. Now, moving around to the front, I will point out again that it is, of course, badge STX, so you'll see it right up there with the F-150 symbol. And then we move around this gray slate, nice looking car. Uh, let's talk about the front end of this vehicle. So part of this package is gonna get you those fog lights down low. Uh, so you'll see that I got the fog lights going here. And then as we move up, you can see I got that nice honeycomb grill. I love honeycomb grills. I think they look great. The one thing I will say is they're hard to keep clean. So just something to be aware of when you're looking at cars like this. Uh, and then you got the nice big F-150 headlights over here. Uh, all halogen beam, because you are in your base model. So just be aware of that. Your daytime running lights. And of course your, uh, you know, your, your, your auto high beams and off beams are all gonna be halogen. So let's look under the hood. It is a 3.5 liter, excuse me, 3.3 liter uh, EcoBoost engine. So if I can reach under here and get this open for us, we'll pop it open and look at it. So under the hood, you can see the engine is sitting right up front. Uh, I can see all of the, everything's pretty easy to access and I've actually got a good amount of space in this car. As far as getting access to my battery, if I ever need to jump it, I've got a nice easy uh, access there. Windshield wiper fluid uh, and then reaching around, you know, if I get to uh, as far as my coolant in the vehicle and then my air box is right here, of course, too. So I've got easy access to a lot of the items in the car and I've got extra space. So if you're one of those guys who wants to mod your truck, and you wanna add in additional lights to the vehicle, whether it be underneath or anything like that, know that you've got space under the hood to mount things. Cause as someone who owns a Jeep Wrangler and likes to do that stuff, I can appreciate needing the space. So as we move around to the side here, uh, same thing, you'll see the 20 inch wheels that we mentioned. Uh, you've got the breakaway mirrors right here. So they push in, uh, they push all the way out. So in case somebody bumps one in the parking lot, you're safe there. Now this is the short box vehicle right here. And of course it does have a bed liner that's been added. And then additionally that I will point out that as an accessory, they did add the, uh, the running boards on the vehicle. So just be aware of that. Those are a couple accessories that you can add to the vehicle. Now, as far as trucks go, I know the resale value is always one of those things where a lot of times they look at the bed of the truck and see what it looks like. Uh, having a liner can be you know, a, a nice thing to have because it can be replaced and it can save you um, as far as how your vehicle looks and as far as trade-ins uh, or if you're selling it outright. Now this vehicle, on the back of it does have a backup camera, so I'll point that out, it's actually right there. And then as we scroll down, you'll see that I do have uh, a setup for towing here. So I've got all my uh, my accessories and everything that I would need as far as towing goes, uh, which is really nice to have just to make life a little bit easier on you. So next up, we're gonna hop inside the car and we're gonna go over the interior features of the car. So let's check that out next. What's up guys, since this is a crew cab, the first thing I wanted to show you is the interior and the fact that I can have the seat pushed all the way back as a six footer and I can sit behind myself with extra space. So even somebody with a big brace who has to worry about, you know, keeping their leg a little bit bent has that extra room in this vehicle. So really nice to know that you got that. Now, when you come into the car, I will point out that you do have uh, air vents back here to use. You do have an additional power outlet back here along with someone in the front and then you do have a couple of your USB ports, which when we get up to the front, I'll point out the USBs there too. So as we move back out of the car, something I wanna show you is that you can fold these seats up and they're not on a big clunky rail system, which was something I really like. So if I reach underneath the seat here, I can throw this seat up and create a lot of usable space for myself. So you can see what I've got there. So if I need to throw, uh, you know, a TV, a bicycle, potted plants, you know, a bunch of groceries, or if I needed to lay down a bed because me and my dog were taking a long road trip, I've got that space that I can use and I can keep them off of my interior, right? So it's just kind of nice to know that you have that available to you. So that is your second row of this vehicle. Now let's move up to the first row and talk about some of the interior features of the car. So, all right, as we hop in here, I'll point out some of the, uh, the the door and window setups here. So you've got your, your window controls here and your door locks and you've got your mirror controls right here. So left and right and then the pad to adjust. And then of course your door locks are sitting right here. Um, now, moving down, I will point out that you have your emergency brake release right here. And if you need to pop that hood, you've got a clip that you can pull right here. So let's go ahead and crank this car up and talk about the interior features of the car. All right, so I should point out that it is a keyed start here. So as far as starting it up, it's a classic key. It's not a push button start, you know, with my buttons and everything. So just be aware of that. If you're looking at this base model, that is something you're gonna be uh, taking into consideration as far as using. 
So as the car cranks on, of course, I'll get this nice graphic that pops up here. Uh, and I missed it over here, but you've got a graphic that pops up on your smaller 2.3 uh, inch screen too. So it's a very nice input here. So let's go over some of the features on the interior. All right, so on the interior of the car, I'm gonna start you right off here at your lights, which are right on the left down portion of the dash. So you can see that you have your light controls right here and I can toggle through with my tab right here. So it'll let me know exactly where I'm at and I can slide all the way over to auto if I want my lights to be auto lights, right? So you've got your controls right here. And then over here to the left, you'll notice you have your dimmer in your light as far as uh, your, your dash display. So if you wanna brighten it up or if you wanna drop down that, cause it's just a little too bright for you at night. So as far as your controls, you got those right here. Now, as we move up the car, I will point out your light controls, which are right here. Uh, so easy enough to access as far as getting to them and you got your windshield wipers right here. So easy to understand, you can pull and push and turn on your blinkers and then you can hit your lights with your, your, your forward and your backwards motion, right? And now moving over to the other side, I'll just point out that you got your shifter. So as far as shifting into gear, you shift and then it'll let you know. Uh, of course, if I'm throwing it in reverse, you're always gonna have your backup camera throw on for you, but you got a nice big display in this vehicle, part of that package I mentioned earlier. And I really liked it when you cut the wheel, it cuts with you. And you can see those dotted lines right in the middle. So this is lining you up in case you're lining up a hitch. So just be aware of that you've got this setup to help you out in case you need, you know, just a little bit of additional help to get, you know, get things lined up perfectly so you can get it matched up. So, all right, let's move back over to the display over here. I will point out that this is all analog, which is a little bit of a letdown, but we are in a base model. You know, at this point in life, I'd like to see some digital displays there, but no big deal. Uh, you still have your display right here in the center. Now, as far as your display goes, you can toggle through some different screens here. And how I'm doing that is using right here, I can use this up and down and then to select in and to exit out of that screen, I can go right here. So let's look through a couple screens and talk about what we got here. So as I scroll down, you got engine life, you've got, you know, how many miles of this tank of gas, my transmission, the temperature right here. So don't confuse that with your temperature over here, which will be your exterior temperature. Uh, make sure you know what the difference between the two is, because obviously it's not 186 degrees outside. Uh, although this is Texas. Tire pressure, I really love that they show you each individual tire, because not every vehicle always does that. And I feel like it's something at this point in life uh, they should offer to you. Now scrolling down, I can see my speedometer if I want it digitally, which is nice. I still have the analog presentation, but I also have the digital presentation, which is something I, like I mentioned, I, I, it's something I would expect at this point. So now when I jump over to the left is what I did here, you can jump into some different displays up here and there's some actually really cool stuff in here. Um, so I like that you can go down here to towing uh, and I can get into some different towing options um, as far as the status, you know, what's going on if I need to uh, jump into some different options. Uh, and then additionally, I love this off-road setup that they have here. So it's gonna give me and let me know what my radius, what angles I'm sitting at right now. Uh, I'm in a rear wheel drive vehicle right now, uh, but you know what I mean? It's gonna give me that, hey, what degrees am I off on this side, that side, front, back? So kind of a cool feature that this vehicle offers. Now down here in settings, there's a couple really cool things in here when you go under advanced. Um, so the first is my key. And what my key is, is you can set this up and you press it and you're gonna press and hold and then you can set keys. And what it allows you to do is set different uh, options. So, you know, if, if I'm setting up a key, I create my key, I press and hold. And then once I've set it up, I can set it to where, you know, they can't turn up the volume over a certain amount or they can't go over certain speeds. Uh, and I can turn on the 911 assist, which that feature set up to where if you get an accident, the airbags deploy, uh, first uh, they will call down for you. And if you don't answer, they'll call 911 for you. So some really cool things that they can do here as far as max speed, like I mentioned. So if you got a 17, 18 year old in the car and you wanna make sure that they're not speeding too fast, you can lower this down and kind of set these things uh, to make sure that they're driving safely. And then of course you have the volume limiter option too here, which I just mentioned. So some cool things you can do with the my key setup. Uh, so I love that that option is available to you. Now display settings, this is where I can just see different kind of units. If I want, you know, my measurements to be in miles or kilometers. Uh, and then as far as temperature, you know, I want Fahrenheit and Celsius. So, you know, your type, you know, all these things you can change as far as how you want to view it. So it does give you some customization, even though we are in a base model, which is the XL trim. Uh, mind you, this is the SXT package that we went over. So just so we go over that and, and be very clear on ourselves. So you've got your other controls down here as far as your cruise control. And then over here, I've got my Bluetooth controls. So obviously to answer a call, uh, to hang up a call, uh, to, to mute into my voice command button, uh, which this will play a role in the uh, Android Auto section, which I'm gonna show you here in just a second. Now my standard volume controls are right here, and then the M button will allow me to jump between any of my sources that I have. So when I'm hitting it here, you'll see us what I'm jumping through, whether it be AM, whether it be FM, uh, you know, Sirius XM, uh, which you get for 90 days if you're buying a vehicle, and then they usually move you over, uh, unless you've worked out a package. Uh, and then of course I can jump over uh, into my Android Auto, which I had Spotify pulled up. So let me show you just kind of what you were seeing right there from the touch screen. So those are my options that I was going through. I love that this car offers Android Auto on it. I've already connected up my phone. I ran into a few issues, but nothing huge as far as this goes, um, as far as the setup. 
So it took me a couple minutes as a new person, you know, uh, coming into this vehicle, but it was quickly uh, something I could figure out. So I can play my audio. If I want to jump over to all my different options that I have, I can do so right here. So you can see that I've got Google Maps and that's something that I particularly usually use. And I've got different things set up here. So if I wanted to pull something up, I could absolutely do it. It'll start pulling it up and it'll take me to where I need to go, right? So you can see my rehab center there. You saw my knee brace a little bit earlier. So you're aware of what's going on there. So it's that easy to use. Uh, and if I'm driving down the road, it's not always going to let me type in an address necessarily. And that's where using the voice command button is going to come into play. So just be aware of that. Sometimes it's going to ask you to use other things here. So as I jump back over there, I just like to let you know that you have mapping, you have music, you have a lot of things available to you. Uh, the Ford app, I've got my calendar if I had anything going, podcasts, uh, and then of course, you know, weather and of course my uh, Google Play setup. And then I can jump into my classic setup for, uh, you know, my Bluetooth settings. If I need to get to my contacts, my call history, anything like that. So it's an excellent setup. I like that it's very seamless. All you got to do is plug your phone into the USB. Make sure if you are using an Android uh, model that you have the Android Auto app, which you would need to download, which I've already done, but it looks like this if you're going to the Play Store. So you would want to download that app. All you got to do is look it up, uh, Android Auto, and it'll pop up there for you. So as far as the touchscreen goes, it's got some good things working for it i did have like i said a little bit of issues initially getting going but once i got going i was fine now as far as jumping back into uh your normal setup and different settings that you have you know connecting up via bluetooth was pretty easy you know you select the bluetooth button you turn it on add a bluetooth device and you go just make sure it'll ask if you want to search for the car or if you want the car to search for you so easy to set up uh, as far as that function goes and what i like about this is it does give you some you know some info if you're looking at something and you're not exactly sure what it is uh, so just be aware that you have those options available to you uh, so I like that they've kind of integrated where you can jump between the two here uh, because in other vehicles, sometimes the way it's set up, it's not as easy to jump between Android Auto and to jump back over into your vehicle, uh, which this is giving you a lot of easy functionality to do. So that way, if you want to jump over and listen to the radio or you want to jump back into your music, you absolutely can. Uh, so just be aware you have all these different things, your settings as far as vehicle settings and different things you can play with, your camera settings, whether you want to turn guidelines off and on, if you want them to be delayed or different things, know that you have those things available even in this XL model. Um, so you can see I have the media buttons down here that I can use too. Uh, I was working off the steering wheel earlier, so these are the same controls, same configuration here. My volume, my tune, down below I've got my AC control, and then I've got my AC as far as where I want that air to go, uh, you know, and how much and then hot or cold. Now, as far as what I've got over here, I do have these USBs here. The one thing I will say about this that I don't like is you can tuck this away, right? So I can hide this away, but when I'm getting to it, if you need to plug your USB in, I've got a little bit larger hand and I was struggling to get my hand down in there trying to figure out a way to do it. You know, so I wish that this was a little bit wider uh, just because there's, you know, I, I have a big hand, but there's people that are a lot larger than I am, right? So you do have two USBs here though. I want to point out that along with the two USBs in the back of the car. Now this uh, this this kind of space holder right here I like, uh, and you can set your uh, your phone in here sideways. But if I lay it in here, it'll perfectly sit right there. And I've got that little gap, which is kind of cool, uh, but it makes it a little bit hard to get your phone out. So depending on what you want to put in there, you might want to make sure you lay it sideways. And if you have pens and pencils, depending on what your job is, and of course you've got you know your storage for your drinks. Now. In my center console, this is what I love about iPhone 50s and big trucks is you always got a good amount of space uh, to save stuff or it could end up being crap. I know how this works. Um, <laughs> we all do, right? Uh, as far as your flashers and your, you know, you got your flashers right here. And then I've got the uh, auto start stop uh, that I can deactivate or turn on and off, which I really like that you can turn it on and off. Uh, meaning that when I come to complete stops, if it's sitting there idling, it can turn off and keep the AC and electronics on uh, to help me as far as saving for gas mileage. Because in this vehicle, I want to say you're getting 20 and I believe 26 on the highway. So I've got a power outlet here. I showed you the one in the back earlier. Um, and then moving across, you know, I've got black on the dash. They always do that. And I've got a nice little rubber, uh, you know, fill in right here. Uh, this way it prevents glare. And then I've got my nice big door handles. And then moving into the back of the car, you know, I can see I have some privacy glass and a defrost set up back there. So that is the interior. Next up, we're going to take a quick test drive. Uh, we'll talk about some other vehicles. What I think about this one, is it worth it to move up a model? So let's go over that next. All right, guys, so I'm inside of this 2018 Ford F-150 and it's the 3.3 liter uh, EcoBoost engine, so 290 horsepower. And we're gonna take it for a ride and just get a feel for what kind of power it has, what's the ride quality, and what does it compete against? So typically, if you're looking at this vehicle, you're probably comparing it to maybe a Ram 1500 of the same age, or maybe you're looking at a Chevy Colorado, um, or Silverado, I should say, not the Colorado. Uh, so those are probably gonna be your biggest competitors. Now, as far as price point, when they all started off MSRP-wise, they all landed within about 500 to 1,000 bucks of each other, so my guess is 
is that a lot of these cars, when you see them in age, are probably gonna be about the same price. Now, if you are looking, um, you know, as far as towing capacity, same thing, all within about 100 pounds of each other. Uh, so when it comes to that, you're looking around that 76, 7,700 pounds of towing capacity. Now, F-150, known for being a great selling vehicle, there's a lot of them out there on the road, which you can view as good or bad when you read about things like, um, you know, how many are stolen. If, if you've ever gone into a finance office, it's one of those top vehicles they're gonna point out and let you know that it's one of the most stolen vehicles and this is why you should purchase the X and Y, Z products. Now, part of the reason you see more stolen, probably because there's more of them out there on the road. Same thing you'd notice with a Honda Civic, and I happen to know a good amount about Honda. So, as I'm riding around this F-150, it is a nice, spacious vehicle. That is one of the first things that I will point out as far as liking. Um, so you've got a lot of space to work with here. Now, when you're moving down the road, as far as quietness in the cabin, I find this actually a pretty quiet cabin here. I can work with this. I can have a conversation on Bluetooth and not have to yell or anything like that, and I would be just fine. So that's kind of important uh, when it comes to, you know, if you're using this for work a good amount. So you want to be able to talk to whoever and not have to worry about yelling and screaming or saying, hey, hold on, I'll call you back. Now, as far as jumping up the speed, I can quickly come into that. If I gas it here nice and hard, I can quickly get up to 70 miles an hour on this axis road, so I'm gonna let off a little bit, but I've got plenty of moving power. So as far as needing to get the car moving uh, and get around vehicles on the highway, uh, the only thing that I don't like is there's always a little bit of a lag, but that is because it is a 10-speed transmission and sometimes you're dropping speeds, right? So there is that one second delay, uh, but you know, this isn't a, uh, a drag race, so I don't think that you're gonna be pilling off the line against anybody, but I will say that if you had to, you do actually have quite a bit of power. So 290 horsepower, as I mentioned, under the hood of this vehicle. So as far as if I was looking at this model and considering moving up to the XLT, I would probably do it. Uh, this is the SXT package, so it's giving you some of those extra features that you would get in that XLT package. But what I will mention is that a lot of times when you're moving up packages, you're looking at about 4,000 uh, bucks, give or take some, to move up those packages if you're looking at new vehicles. Now, pre-owned's a different world. If you're looking at one that, you know, since it's a 2018 that's a couple years old, maybe you can find one with a little bit different miles, different condition, maybe it's certified, maybe it's not, and you can save dollars there and get yourself into something. This one I'm in only has, I think, 22,000 miles on it, so it's most likely a certified vehicle. Um, so it's gonna sell at a little bit higher price point, but it's gonna come typically with a little bit longer warranty, and it had to pass that check so whenever you see a certified car sometimes people don't know this typically at most dealerships there is a number of checks they have to go through whether it be 125 230 you know whatever the number may be and it has to pass and if it doesn't pass all those checks they either have to fix it or replace those pieces uh, now keep in mind that it also typically has to be uh, a car that has a clean Carfax history not every uh, manufacturer is the same but I'm pretty sure Ford is set up like Honda is uh, so in that sense you're getting a nice clean car for the most part now if they they had some work done and never reported it there's a possibility but a lot of times that would be cosmetic work like maybe you just had a bumper or something of that nature that you had looked at or something kind of like that so just be aware of that now um, when I'm looking at these vehicles, it's always one of those things that I like to ask about. If I can get something that has some extra warranty on it, it gives me that extra protection, I absolutely want it. Uh, but, you know, if you're buying a good vehicle that's known for lasting, maybe that's not as big a concern, right? You have to trust the brand that you're buying, or I would tell you, maybe you should buy a different brand. So as we continue down this road, the things I would talk about that are positives, I've got a good amount of space in the cab and I can fit people behind me comfortably so we can take a long trip. I've got the power that I need so I don't necessarily have to climb to those larger engines unless I really want to tow something big. Uh, my knocks on this car are very basic. You know, it's a basic vehicle, so it doesn't have all the digital displays I want, although it does have Android Auto, which I really do enjoy using. And as you saw me toggle through it earlier, it works pretty seamlessly. Um, other things, maybe I'd want a little bit larger bed, just depending on what I'm gonna load back there. Uh, but you have a lot of options in this vehicle. That's the beauty of trucks. There's typically tons of packages and different bed lengths and things of that nature. So you've always got those options available to you. Um, now, moving up a model, I would probably do it just because there's the option of different safety features and just different add-ons that I can get for the vehicle. And I really like the idea of typically moving out of a base. Base are great cars if you want to add your own things or it really is just a work truck for you. But I typically find in most uh, of the manufacturers, if you move one model up uh, from the base, you're usually getting a laundry list of items that you can add to the car. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. If I can find you somewhat of a list, what I'll do is I'll throw that up on the screen, probably right over in here somewhere. Maybe I'll put it over my face. I don't know. I'll get crazy. Uh, but I'll give you an idea for, hey, if I was looking at that one model of what are the, all these different items that I might add? So you can decide, do I want to go out there and look for an XL or do I want to maybe look for that XLT and see if it's worth spending a little bit extra money or I want to pick up something with a little bit more miles on it. So um, that would be my thoughts on that. I typically like those a little bit better. 
But as far as holding value, I will say that base models typically do a lot well, a lot better, I should say, because there's less to break in the car. So, you know, they're not giving up as much fluff to get rid of in the long end. So that's kind of a whole long, different discussion. But as far as holding value, I like base models. But if this is going to be a car that I'm going to keep, I'm going to drive my family around in, and I'm going to be in a lot, I would probably want to go one model just to get those extra creature uh, comforts that I might like. So... I'm inside of this 2018 Ford F-150 uh, as the SXT package, which I mentioned earlier, is going to get you the uh, the badging on the outside in the front of the car. It's going to get you the 20-inch wheels. Uh, it is also interior-wise going to get you the larger screen, the cloth interior, and then manual adjustments to my lower lumbar. So maybe if I'm taking a long trip, I want a little bit of adjustment there. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'll do the best I can to help you out. Let me know what you think of the review. Let me know if there's something I missed or another car you want me to go over. Anytime I can get my hands on a new car, I absolutely will. So we'll talk to you soon. Later. Oh!